Welcome back to Pole Barn Garage, where today I'm back up with Kevin from Junkyard Digs to fetch my pristine 1969 Pontiac GTO. We're gonna load it on a wrecker, Kevin's square body wrecker. Drag it somewhere warmer, as fast as we can. Yes. And then you're gonna drive 250 miles home and die. If you are familiar with this rusty GTO, let me get you up to speed. Kevin, JD, and I went up to Minnesota to work on a whole bunch of cars that had been abandoned there, and amongst them was this 69 GTO. The owner said that it was his father's car that he had bought brand new. The car had been off the road since the early 80s, as best as he could remember. JD and I jimmied our way into the car, hotwired it, and in a short amount of time, we had awakened the legendary Pontiac from its 40 plus year slumber. We dislodged the GTO from its resting place in this giant pile of hay and took it for a couple rips down a dirt road. At the Dukes of Hazard, we're based in Missouri. There you go. I'm pretty sure my ass is on the ground. Up to this point, I hadn't actually planned on buying the car, but then, like an idiot, I talked myself into it. So we rented a U-Haul trailer, and I dumped it in Kevin's yard in the middle of Iowa, and there I abandoned it for the last six or seven months, until this video where I decided, let's drive this car that's rotted in half home to Missouri 250 miles. This is exactly where you parked it, right? Yes. I am a truck, I'll tell you that much. Hey, Brandwin Park. I kind of forgot how bad this is. You were very enthusiastic every time we talked about it. Oh, I was like, yeah, like I'll just come up and drive it home. And I'm standing here, 250 miles from where you are, talking about it enthusiastically, going, I don't... Oh, you will. <laughs> I'd love to see it, though. Well, I guess we'll, we'll give it the old college try. Professional tow truck man. Kevin, Junkyard it's Dicks. A, it's an actual tow truck with an actual idiot driving it. I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs> Huzzah! time on the road in 40 years. Congratulations. Job well done. Let's go home. Flexed a little. You'll get that on these. It's, it's normal. Here, let me, let me open the lock. Ah. There you go. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't time, man. We could push it in the shop with the tow truck, but it might just accordion. No, nah, we'll just fire it up, man. See you. Pontiac is good. Under the hood here, we've got a 400 cube two barrel optional two barrel on this you got money back to order that engine actually uh, and that's right i stole this one i forgot yep cranks we just need fuel now okay well that's pretty much all you need to get your gto going right there you love it you want more here you go This is a points distributor, isn't it? Yeah, they might have corroded it They up. probably corroded up. I can't imagine what would have caused them to do such a thing. Okay, here, I'll unplug the battery. You rub them together. Perfect. It'll run. Yep, they'll immediately refoul, but... That's fine. No, they won't. They got 250 miles of driving to do. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna die. I know! <laughs> Pontiac and a GM two barrel. I can't believe that runs that good. This is idling after not having ran for months. You'll have that on these. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you, man. You were calling me on the phone, like, I'll drive it back, and I was watching it blowing the wind in the, in the backyard. <laughs> That was on a day not like today. I can't believe it was still there. I technically may have wind eroded. Well, let's disconnect the battery so that it doesn't burn to the ground and then deal with this tomorrow. Yeah, you know what I think would fix this right now? A beer about it? A beer. Yeah, deal. Our quest for beer led us to Tom's house, where we robbed his scrap pile for parts to fix the GTO. 
That's like three cars worth of metal right there. Mm -hmm. We better keep looking what else we got. We got round things. Holy hell, where'd you find? These are nice. Tom's been holding out on me. Where I come from, you would see lots of crackheads driving around with Rangers just like this. Thanks. Except for those don't have new tires. No, your tires are too good. Yeah, Wait. well, I What's couldn't find used ones. <laughs> Damn it. Well, the uh, GTO body panel delivery is here this it's morning. A kit. Yeah, do it yourself. Cut to fit. So I think the best course of action here to start on this is actually going to be to take the seats out of it and see what we're working with for a floor. And that's at least going to get most of the sharp dangly tetanus out of the way and go ahead and do brakes and lines and stuff like that. Uh, and then we'll come back to fixing the lack of car. I, I use the term fix very loosely here. Well, this is terrifying. Scariest part. I'm very curious to see what's under there. Looks a lot better under here. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, this has floors. I mean, I, like, not much. But I know. They are here, they're though. all here. I figured this from here to here would be gone. Yeah, I know. Who took the quarter panels? <laughs> Look at <laughs> Literally, That's here's the seat. front seat. Look how solid this thing is up here. This is bullshit. Oh. The body bushings are good. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? The Zoss needs some help. Mm. <laughs> Fixed. Yep. <laughs> this one's great. Like, put a muffler on. Never mind. That one has. It's got a muffler. The muffler's even well attached. So this sucks here. Oh, this is picture ready. Oh God. Was this rot or an accident that damaged all this? I'm kind of wondering. Where did the back of this car go, man? I don't know, because everything in front of the rear wheel is it's not that bad. <laughs> totally repairable. I don't mean to alarm you, but something's been rubbing on this. Oh, it's the car. Is it flexing that bad? I bet it is. I bet I sit in the car. Well, then the axle goes up with weight on it. Yeah, here too. That's yeah, it's crazy. been rubbing on that. Huh. So the whole s floor is sunk? Not the whole floor. Well, how's that but, much? Oh, well, Ow. maybe the whole floor. Right here is where the body bushing isn't. Oh, yeah, uh, so yeah. it is dropped. It's a lower, it's been slammed. Channeled. Fix that real quick. Oh, oh yep. my God. She's, she's a little lower than she's supposed to be. So given the pleasant surprise that I'm of course not surprised by that my GTO is basically pristine underneath, I'm just gonna go ahead and dive into brakes, oil change, and just kinda knock out everything that needs done underneath the car. You know, maybe uh, remove some of that. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do brakes, get every suspension, whatever needs done underneath the car, then we'll set it on the ground and do the rest of it just for convenience sake. So we have a worse car than normal, but we have better working conditions than normal. So those two should balance themselves out and there's obviously not a chance that I'm gonna die in this in the next couple of days. Hmm. Hmm. It's like they're kind of rusty or something. It moved, I think. Oh, thanks. I'm gonna take a swing. Hey, you go ahead. The trick is the lower the wind up. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> but I loosened it up first, you know? <laughs> Usually that takes two rotary wind ups. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't think that was work. gonna work. I was just f***ing around. <laughs> Shit! Uh, that one almost got away from me. <laughs> well, the wheels are off. I'm just gonna. Kind of soak everything down. Give us our best shot at getting them broken free. Especially these. These are hard to make. They'd use a metal line to go from the hose to the uh, wheel cylinder. We'll go ahead and pop drums off and see what we're working with in there. We're going to start by knocking off the grease cap here. Looks like it's been serviced before. I don't know how many miles this car has. I can't make out the odometer. Now, and a lot of people are probably saying, oh, you're just doing this for shock value. You know, just for our entertainment or for views. And that's partially true, actually, but it's also, this is a freaking 69 GTO, okay? This is a special car. This is not some, I don't know, typical malaise era thing you know, that I tend to drag home. This car has significance. Looks like we got our original Timpkins in here. Might have to adjust that brake in to get the drum off. Looks fine. 
clean it, pack it. These will be good to go for another 50 years. So tag up on the shoes a bit. There we go. Eh, inner bearing stayed behind. It's stuck. Nah, not stuck. The inner bearing looks fine as well. We have a, uh, it's like an elephant's foot of grease there. I think even the seal could be reused. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's a Pontiac. It's fine. All right, right front is removed. Uh, for the rears here, that they're loose on here. We just have to clean up this edge here. Lots of times it gets rusty here. I soaked them, but it wasn't enough. So put a wire wheel and these should come off. I believe we have a bit of a rust weld situation going on here. Yeah. Uh, it's got a hell of a groove cut into them. I actually got one of the rear drums off, as you guys saw, but I've been fighting the other one, and then Kevin shows up and has two new drums. I, uh, like, this is fine. It will wear in. That is the worst drum I've ever seen. That is incredible, really. Yeah. There's some brand new ones left over from Cutlass. Excellent. Thank God we do a lot of A-bodies in this Ford channel. <laughs> well, put it on my tab. That's all dirt and walnuts. It's got a lot of miles on it. No. There's, I mean, yeah, you're right. There's no indications whatsoever. Original paint. Yep. Yeah. I don't see anything to show that it's seen a lot of time on the road. No. <laughs> Basically a $40,000 car. Uh, I wish I could afford things this expensive. I, I wish you could too. <laughs> We can't all be as successful as me. <laughs> all those members paying their one dollar a month. The low buck club. This yep. is what you bought. My <laughs> demise. Hey, hey, stop. That's uh, that's my frame. No, no. Let's see. Don't no. <laughs> I need that. Here, Angus, hold that side. Oh, I'm doing it. That's not what you like to see out of your rear end, but but it'll work. It sounds good. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, sounds great. I came prepared with a bunch of uh, cheap Rock Auto brake parts. Throw them in here, see if these brake lines break free. That's not going to happen. Oh, yeah, they'll be nice and oval. Oval shape. <laughs> that looks really good. Yeah. That lady does a killer job. All right, well, I'm gonna try to get all the brake lines off of this. This one's salvageable, it looks okay. But we are gonna be making a lot of brake lines for this, probably all of them except this one. Can you get the rubber hose out of the frame? It is rusted solid. That's okay, I'll well, just cut it out. So we can use that as a form to make some new ones. It's probably still good. I'm not joking, it looks it looks okay in there. There's one brake line down, 15 more feet of it to go. <laughs> oh, well, this SURR tool makes really quick work of it. Beautiful flares every time. Jim has arrived here. Reinforcements. Yes, we need them. <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. We might need some. <laughs> I guess uh, if you want to tackle a brake and yeah, I can do one. I'll wrap this one up. There's one brake. Ah. Boom, that's a drum brake. Don't be scared of drum brakes. They're not that bad, just a lot of springs. Just do one side at a time. Yeah, yeah, for God's sake, don't. If, you, if you've never touched one before, don't tear everything apart, because you'll be screwed. Leave one as a reference. Oh, what do you think, Tom? It looks perfect to me. I don't think I'd change a thing. Yeah, you can't, uh, you can't buy that body work. Right. <laughs> Brand new brake drums, though. That's right. We can't decide. Safety if, first. Well, does that make it safer, or does that make it drive on the road and therefore more deadly? <laughs> oh, good All right. point. So it wasn't really hurting anyone in that guy's yard. <laughs> you could literally throw a cat all the way through the drum. <laughs> I can film you guys talking from over here. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to wonder which, hello! <laughs> so the tailpipe's holding the rear bumper on? No, actually this ratchet strap hooked to the antenna hole is uh, holding the rear bumper on. Sometimes when you have a car, you know, that maybe hasn't been super well taken care of. Well, not like this one, of course, but, you know, if you were to have a rusty vehicle, you will have some bolts get stuck in wheel cylinders. And these front GMA body drums are really hard to get to. You can't get a socket on them. I have my socket right here, and uh, I'll check. Got it. And that bolt was not coming out of there. It might now, though, with an impact. You got the bolts out of your yes. side. There we go. 
much easier. You broke the metal line over there by touching it and it disintegrated. I also broke mine by taking a sledgehammer to it for some reason, so I guess I'm gonna make these goofy little brake lines, but I don't have that flare nut. We'll just use a regular flare, tighten it into the wheel cylinder, stick it in the hole, and then hook it up to the brake hose. I'm gonna re replicate goofy little line here. Something like that should work, and then we'll have to put a little hook in it once we get it installed. And I can just barely get an open end wrench on that flare nut. It's not ideal, but since we have all new stuff, we're, we're gonna get away with it once. Uh, the next guy who touches this will be screwed. And that guy is probably me. Thankfully, I hate that guy. So that one's assembled. Jim is cleaning wheel bearings out of the bucket of gas. They feel okay? Yeah, yeah I, think, I thought they were all right. Probably better quality than what you get today. Oh, I still got to make one short brake line for your side, huh? Still got to assemble this one. We've got both brake lines on the rear. Back of the car is basically done. Don't misunderstand here. Absolutely nothing you're seeing is easy. Well, I got our new brake line in back here. New rubber hose. Jim's throwing a drum on. I'm glad you showed up, Jim, because I was, I felt like I was treading water for a little bit there. Should be able to set our brake adjustment afterwards. I'll get it a little closer. The one I'm just touching. Ready for bearing? Absolutely. We had to put the car on the ground so I could get to that brake line for the left front wheel. While it's on the ground, I might as well go ahead and change the master cylinder. So here's a Dorman master cylinder I bought for it that doesn't even resemble the one on the car. I'm sure it'll be just fine. Well, I broke one of the lines for it, so I'm gonna have to remove it from the junction block and make another one of those. So basically putting all new brake lines in the whole car. I don't know why that I'm surprised by that. Maybe my lack of intelligence. The push rod should come off separate, right? Yeah, there we go. I think it's rusted to it. Is it hermetically sealed? I believe it has become hermetically sealed, yes. Is violent necessary? Yes. yes. <laughs> you want me to start over? No, no, no. We roll with the bloopers around here. Okay. That's a new master cylinder with a new brake line. We gotta make two more brake lines. Gotta make the left front wheel and the front to rear line. Okay, well I just made the left front brake line in here. It looks pretty decent. That's all I got time for today. That's a lot for a day. Yeah, a lot. Of That's like the whole brake system. Yeah, nice. just gotta run the front to rear line yet. I just tore out the old one and it pissed all over your floor, so you're welcome. Probably not the first Shit time. Happens. No, <laughs> the floor's actually mostly brake fluid. Jim will be yeah, back <laughs> tomorrow to help. We're gonna need all the help I can get with this pile of shit. Should do it for brake lines until we find out that the two I didn't change leak. But you know what? I'm just gonna take that chance because I'm sick of it. Jim's returned to help out this morning, thank God. Uh, we're gonna adjust the brakes now and the lines are done. Hydraulically, we are sealed. Well, it's time to bleed some brakes. Um, the door won't open, so I'll just... Uh... I got it. Oh, I got it. Oh, hang on. We'll see what happens. This feels even more dangerous. Promise, if he goes through the floor now, you fall a lot farther. <laughs> now I got a tough air there. You're starting to get happy. Pump her up. Oh yeah, we got a little pedal now. Oh yeah, oh, that was a good one. Still getting a lot of foam action on this side yet. Well, now that we have brakes, let's go ahead and maybe throw some shocks at it, drop the oil, maybe even some exhaust. Try to wrap up the underside of this thing as much as possible before we tackle the glaring issues. So we better get this out of the way, meaning this. most of the back of the car. Saws all time, violence. Gas tank now? Yeah, I'll get one side here. Okay. Well, gas tank slash trunk floor. Woo! <laughs> it's, still, out. it's still shiny. Oh, hell, we can turn that over and put the shiny side down. Oh, oh the hitch. The, is hitch. The, the retaining hitch. The retaining hitch. Ah. 
Removed with pliers. Removed with pliers. I see coming now. Oh, shit. Oh, pliers. Cool. Everybody up to date on their tetanus? Nope. You got extras. I did. I Holy got, shit. I got bonus. Hey, I'll do the shocks now. <laughs> yeah, the shocks are going to be a piece of cake. Kevin, you got like a friendly neighborhood crackhead fix this stuff up? I do, yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah, just throw it up one. Yep. I don't know if there's any metal left in that. No. It might just be dirt, really. <laughs> Shaped dirt. I'm not going to be driving home without a nice smooth ride, you know? Got to have new shocks. Wow, it actually unbolted. What? Your bolts come out, Jim? Yeah. What the hell? That one's stuck. You got one of them out, Jim's having a good time back here. Oh, yeah, we're having all sorts of fun. Somebody had welded the shock mount in, and sure enough, when Jim went to tighten it down, it snapped. He had to cut off both sides of the shock mount and now drill it out so you can put a new shock mount in there. I'm still working on this front shock. I just got the bolt out. What people like to do on these is they're supposed to take a regular fender bolt up into a nut clip inside the A-arm. Those break, and then people use a bolt and a nut. I've done it a hundred times, but man, it's a bitch when they're rusty. I got that one out though. Boom. Put this new Chinesium shock up in here. In the middle of working on the shocks, I went ahead and got some new tires mounted on those TA wheels. Tires are worth more than the whole damn car. <laughs> they literally are. Nevertheless, they're rims. <laughs> I'll give a hundred bucks for the wheels, but <laughs> they look better than the car too. They not bad though. Six fifty on the tires. Yeah, you might actually survive this whole thing after all, based off looks. Look, I don't mess with brakes or tires. I'll take a lot of other chances. That's that's smart. Clearly, but brakes and tires, don't mess with those. You got your shocks on. Very nice. They're nice and shiny. Ignore the brake line. I gave up after that one but you know whatever this is one step closer to safety when you're driving something like this you need all of that that you can get i don't know what you're talking about <clears throat> take this moment to take a shot of your gut to encourage go to pole bar merch and get your merch in that well you always forget to say it or at the end and that's true so I'm, 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 get, I'm getting your merch plug in for okay, you good good right there pullbarnmerch.com <laughs> get your swag Get some badass koozies. Hey, you got that new hat. What's the new hat out? Get the Hawaiian hat. The Hawaiian hat, yes. Yeah. Have things escalated, Dalton? Unfortunately, yes. I'm just gonna have to cut it off of there, I guess. Dalton, I would just like to point out that the bolt is still in there, and I, I hear it. I hear it crying out to you. It's saying F-O. I know. Point of this hat, Jim. Yeah. The tie rod is frowning. It's unhappy. Should we make it happy? Yeah, let's uh, at least make it neutral. Okay. Oh, how convenient. I see you have the Alignment 6000 pry bar. Yes, yeah, see this is SAE approved. Remember all that stuff I was saying about safety? I'm full of shit. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Pull harder. Thanks so, or is, how, how are we oh, looking? Keep going. Okay. Seriously, keep going. More, more, a lot more. More. Welcome to Jim's Quick Lube. Oh damn, it's actually working. It's actually taking grease. I'm gonna change the oil in this. Get rid of this quality Fram filter on here. Yeah, the oil is actually not too bad. There's no gas in it or anything. Very nice. Just dirty oil. Yeah, it's just dark. Well, we got the sun coming in from the west here through the windows, looking for glitter. Yep. Panning for gold. And I don't see anything. But it's a Pontiac, so I'm not terribly surprised. I'm going to pre-fill this with some Valvoline VR1 2050, and that's because I'm so confident that this is a great engine. VR1 has the correct amount of ZDDP and the correct type of ZDDP for your engine. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. This is just like the cheapest classic car oil you can buy. Now, are you going to torque that through the proper Walmart torque spec or your torque spec? Uh, give me my impact wrench. Got it. Oh, I never tightened that shock over here. The top one? Just like the brake lines? No, that was someone else. It's some bare wire sitting in here. It's factory joints. Nothing looks like eaten, weirdly, considering it's in a bed of rat shit. Well, we'll fix that by just putting it back in its tube. I'll wrap the whole tube. I'm not going to half-ass it. Okay. Now, we know that petcock's going to come right out, correct? <laughs> 
Well, I don't know. It is a Minnesota car, so maybe? Nope, that's gonna break. Think it's smarter, not harder. Boom. That is really nice and clean. Jim's gonna suck up all these nuts while we wait for the coolant to drain. There we go. We got lots of guests in the shop today. So Tom reminded me here. I'm pretty sure you put a roll of toilet paper in these things. And they were they were sold by J.C. Whitney and you know Western Auto back in the day, and you just put a roll of toilet paper in, and that it's like an extra oil filter. So basically, it's a fram. No, it's a going down. Okay. Well, that might be an actual filter. No, that, nope, is, a, that is a roll of toilet paper. That is a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> Holy toilet shit. Paper. I got more yeah, in the bathroom. Is this a Downy tube line? Uh, that's the cheap gas station stuff. I think it's Charmin. <laughs> <laughs> I said we put a new one in and go. <laughs> oh, yeah. That. Holy shit. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're putting that back in. Does yeah. it have a rubber gasket on the bottom here? Or is that just the toilet paper? That's the toilet paper. Unwipe, unwind it. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta use the bathroom. Let me, you take, go ahead. Take that. <laughs> That'll keep you from getting any rash. I, I don't know. Maybe all this oil filter technology is a bunch of shit. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> oh. Holy cow. Wow. I found where it starts. We can wipe with it. We can use this. We can reuse it. I bet it doesn't work with a shit. <laughs> oh, 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 man. <laughs> Look at that. That joke sucked. Play again. <laughs> Your toilet paper is too much for this. Times have changed. <laughs> well, Kevin, just go Kevin's take just some off and put it back. This is how much times have changed. Yeah, There's that much more toilet well. paper. Sorry. Oh, yeah, we can shop. We can we'll use this again. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> now it'll make it home. Bad boy's got another 100,000 miles in her now. That's what kept this baby alive. Let's just reinstall this. There we go. We're going to make a the thermostat gasket because I forgot one. And just a little gasket material. And then probably a little RTV. And a razor blade. And you can have one too. While Jim makes our thermostat gasket, I'll Get a lower radiator hose stuck on here. And after he gets that wrapped up, we'll stick an upper radiator hose on here. Look at that. Professional. Uh, yes. Now when you use an RTV with gaskets, RTV isn't the gasket. RTV is just helping the gasket with those slight imperfections on the surfaces that you might have on a slightly older car such as this. So guys, don't go in there and lay it out like you're icing a cake for crying out loud you shouldn't see it yes <laughs> it should just be a slight little spooge on the edge clamps were in the budget naturally i was just getting ready to swap the alternator belt on this i figured i'd just do that off camera real quick no uh, i touched it and the bolt broke off in the alternator so we need to remove that drill it out and then we can put a new belt on it nothing could ever be easy. I just remembered, I brought a brand new alternator with me. <laughs> Let's just throw this on then, makes life a lot easier. I pulled off the uh, field wire cover here and it is solid rust. That's amazing. There's no way that unscrews, right? No, it's, it's I'm just gonna cut that back. We'll put a new ring terminal on it. Well, the pliers save the day here. Oh, there went my spacer. We got a steel bolt and an aluminum alternator. They get exposed to moisture, and they basically freeze and rust weld themselves together. Even though it's not rust, it's some other kind of chemical. <sighs> wow, that took some doing. Voila, here's our new Super Chinesium Rock Auto Special alternator here. We'll put a new belt on it. And uh, thankfully, this thing being as bare bones as it is, well, that's, uh, that's all there is to it. <laughs> it's just that. So anytime you change an alternator, it's a good idea to change your regulator as well, if it's an externally regulated alternator, like this 1969 Pontiac is. We'll keep the old one just in case, but if it's as corroded as everything else, I, you know, I know it's working, but for how long? You know, they use contact points inside of them, so let's just change it out and we'll throw that one in the glove box the regulators is right back here this one's an original delco remy uh, we gotta get this noise suppressor off of here so that we can listen to our factory am fm delco radio in total silence no static at all and there's a new regulator and uh, here's our old one again 
you know, uh, spiders or not, we'll keep it. I, that door doesn't open. Here, I'll put it in the trunk. <laughs> uh, no, I won't. Earlier that day, Jim and I went to an exhaust shop and had a lead pipe made and some adapters so we could try to get some exhaust on the car. Let's see if we can finagle some kind of mufflers onto this thing so I'm not deaf and suffocated by the time we... Well, the suffocation won't be really be a problem. There's a lot of ventilation in this one. Oh, and Jess is here. She's been hanging out with Mook all week. So it'll probably gonna be a couple more days. Oh, drat. Don't wear our welcome hat. You gotta keep her happy. Y'all don't, don't tell her not to kick us out. Exhaust? Maybe? Hell, it ain't bad. It's a little off. I mean, I guessed when I told the guy what angle. I paid 80 bucks for all that exhaust. Clamps and hangers and everything. We got pretty lucky there. There's still good folks out there. My angle was a little, a little bit off. <sighs> there. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I'm just gonna shoot a self-tapper into this. Is this the first one? Yes. The, well, the first official self-tapper. First of many. Genuinely worried there wouldn't be enough steel for a self-tapper to be effective. <laughs> Oh no! You were right! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, it just falls right back out. <laughs> I've never seen that. No! That looks totally fine. Let's finish some exhaust. If I can't self tamper to it, I'm pretty much lost. But he's got a welder. Surely a, a weld will stick. Well, let me just clean off the spot, see how bad the car completely disintegrates while I do that. <laughs> I really need to get it as high as we can. Maybe we weld this and it just burns the car down and it's no longer a problem. That's an exhaust pipe. Well, that pipe is done. Looks awful, but it'll work. Then this side, I gotta drill this bolt off that broke out. I think I can get to that. Probably gonna be here a while. Got to find an angle to get at it. We don't have to drill it out straight. We just got to drill it out to where we can put a nut on the top. I have a feeling if I try to remove this manifold, I'm just going to make things worse. Kind of. We brought the professionals in. Mhm. Mm it's fixable. Right, new new frames. Be, yeah, a new frame and a and new then car. They make a report for it. Some things are just parts cars. No, no, no. I'm not sure this one is even that. It could be the squirrels that are to blame. They've been using the frame rails of this thing as a highway for about 30 years. Are you planning on driving this home? Yeah. We're getting pretty close to getting through this thing. We're lucky on this one. We got a mile to play with. There we go. You might even say that it's fixed correctly. Let's hang a muffler on this piece of shit. Is there something wrong with me that I come back for a third day? I would say yes. <laughs> uh, we have cut the exhaust here. We're going to put the muffler on. and uh, But first we have to remove the custom wire hanger to the parking brake cable. Um, that was for performance and lightweight, I believe. Yes. Oh yeah. Fixed. So we're gonna have to lower the car down. You can see here where the floor is, well, missing. And it's not missing, actually, that's the problem. It's still here. And I think we're gonna have to remove the seat or something to try to get this floor up so that we can actually put a muffler in this side. We didn't have that problem on this side. This side's, oh, somehow. It's actually fine. I don't, I don't understand that, really. I don't know how this is unbolting, but it is. But I'd rather not trash the seats, you know. It's even a pair of GMA body bucket seat cores. It's probably worth six or seven hundred bucks. Oh, hang on. Does it have the Indian on it? Oh my God, it does. We got free Tootsie Pop. This bolt is loose back here. Three out of four actually unbolted. It actually came out clean. With the seat removed, we were able to get the floor out of the way of the muffler so we could finish our exhaust. We're gonna hang our other scavenger pipe here, and uh, then I'll have mufflers. I won't have much of a car, but I'll have mufflers. Oh yeah, those are some bitchin' scavenger pipes.
Not really. I hate glass packs. Yeah, you're gonna have to adjust that. Oh, there it is. There we go. Oh, perfect. It's time to fix the frame. The frame rail's broken in half. I don't know what the hell they did to this thing. Must have gotten a rear end collision in the salt mine. Not sure. Oh, it'll go right back in. It's just perfect. Probably right here. We'll try a little extra in case we trim that. All right, to the chop saw. We've got to go up a ways. Yeah, so it'll be like right there. Yep, that's it. We're gonna plate straight to the bumper bracket because that's the only thing left of the whole car. You don't want that piece, did you? Oh, I, that's my frame, oh. man. What the hell? Well, I'm... good news, we got a new one. Oh, oh. Somewhere around here there's a broom handle, I think. It almost looks like steel. Just about, almost. Don't let it fool you. Is everybody happy with the bumper placement? Yes. <laughs> Crowd says yes. Mm -hmm. I've changed my mind. Fuck. Now remember kids, don't look directly at the light. Unless you're a camera. It is what it is. <laughs> what, what's that? Nothing? Uh, the infinite void? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we don't even need that anymore. Yes, we do. Well. How much did it move? Uh, quite a bit. Only, only three or four. a little early. <laughs> yep, time to put it back. It's your turn to fuck it up. Yep, you gotta move all the you know I'm gonna make it home now. Oh, you're lifting a bit. Huh? You're getting warm and lift. Oh, never mind. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that stack of dog s. Ready? Yeah, let's see how bad it moves. <laughs> it's better. Well, it's just sprung. That's all. <laughs> wow, that really did drop a whole bunch yet still. How does that work? Well. It's a, I don't think it's as bad as it was. No, I mean, it stays there on its own, so that's an improvement. Is this side moving a lot? I would not plan on getting in any accidents. Yeah, don't plan on getting in one of those. That's some good life advice, Kevin. You got anything else for us? Don't drive this car. I'll ignore that one. We gotta tie this quarter back on to this trunk drop here. It's and all pretty floppy. Yeah, <laughs> so we, the goal here is to keep the car on the car and not on the highway. I'll just shoot a self tapper with it. Oh, that's good metal there. Oh, boom. Look at that. There we go. That'll hold the quarter on. Hell yeah. yeah. You even got fancy rivets mm -hmm. and some self tappers. And a welder. And a welder ish. All of the attachments. Is, is that considered welding? No. All right, so we got to tie this quarter uh, to something. So here's a piece of quarter inch all thread. For the quarter, it makes sense. Yes, it's in the name. So we'll tack it to the quarter and then tack it to this frame rail here. Boom, body mount. Ow. Oh, I, oh, Dalton, I, I turned that up because I thought you were welding the bottom oh, one. God. Very difficult to weld for some reason. Look how much better it is now. Wow. That's, that's pretty good. Let's get some sheet metal and make a new quarter panel. Oh, this is a whirlpool? Uh, Maytag. Maytag, good. Yeah. They have better, they make better for doors and stuff. <laughs> quarter panels. I brought my own nibbler. <laughs> good call. Four man plasma cutter right here. This is the part where we snap our fingers and it's perfectly fabricated into place, right? Yeah. Shit. So you can see we've got the uh, wheelhouse here. We're just gonna radius this. We're gonna continue the wheelhouse down to here. We're gonna leave this little bit here. We can wrap that behind there for strength. But, uh, uh, that's, that's pretty pro. I'm gonna follow that line exactly. not to be trifled with. I like it. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Very nice. It's hard to what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see that. <laughs> there we go. Oh, this reminds me of the Le Mans. 
Reminds me of last Tuesday. <laughs> All I know is it's hard to... S hard to shift. Oh, is that what it said? I don't know. <laughs> Fun Whoa. stuff happening underneath the GTO. Uh-huh. We need to get the body up off the frame. This has been touching That's in general, which is wrong. Right there. And that might be because our entire support right here is gone. Most likely. Just just a thought. And a body mount goes here, oh, and no. it's not there anymore. I like where this is going. <laughs> oh, cool. Perfect. I mean, it will reshape the body. Hell yeah. No, this is good. We put something in here in between the cross member. We put it up on the frame. I can get under the frame here. I found this bed liner laying out by the dumpster. Uh, hope you don't mind. Oh, look at that. <laughs> You've never seen anything like that, have you? No. <laughs> For good myself. reason. <laughs> it's freaking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that part there is higher now, I suppose. Rinse and repeat. Oh yeah, there we go. Just barely hit the brake line. There we go. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, just keep her going. Yeah. A little uh, more. It still hasn't moved the pinch well though. It is moving this now, <laughs> though. We gotta go just a bit more. It's lifting the car off the Well, Please. I hated that. Hang on, I can, I can get them in here. Please. Yeah, I don't think that floor is going to support the weight of the car. <laughs> Done. Okay, everybody out. We have a brilliant strategy for attaching the back of the car to the car again. <laughs> and We attach it to the front of the car. Yes. Well, the top of the car, actually. Oh, yes. So via triangulated via the lateral structure. Correct. So we're going to brace this frame rail here because it was in pretty bad condition. There's no actual original stuff. Yeah, it's gone. Out. There's a catch to this. The car has no body mounts in the rear. So that basically means the body could just float on the frame and probably fall off. So instead of the body sitting on top of the frame, we're going to use the body to hold the frame up where it's supposed to be. Yes. Sandwich and just, yeah. Uh, uh, so I bought some all thread and we're just going to bolt the frame to the truck. We're making the car a pliers. Yes. Squeeze. <laughs> Squeeze together. Done. Braced? Oh yeah, every piece of scrap bullshit we had laying around oh, here now. Oh man. I feel safer already. Okay, well it still wiggles the same, but that's because we haven't applied the clamp. The pliers. The ply. They don't even know what our genius is. No. They have no idea. Because they've never seen anything this dumb before. <laughs> I mean, genius. Yes. So here's the plan. We got some all thread here. Jim and I cut some bushings out of that truck bed mat. We're just going to bolt the frame of the car to the deck lid because that's the only good part of the whole car. Kevin welded these tabs on here onto our new frame rails. Brand new. <laughs> and then we're just going to bolt through the double panel portions of the deck lid and that's going to quit the wiggliness. Yeah, Ex exhibit A. Yes, note the wiggliness. The wiggliness. It will be gone. So we'll just feed this. <laughs> <laughs> just this whole scene. A well-lit little cabin that you're in. A co cozy little area that is just the entire trunk of a car. Man, I can film from pretty much anywhere on this one. It's very convenient. We could do a podcast inside of this trunk. Okay. Yep, that's done. We just tighten our bushing plate here. Let's see. Test. Yes. What do you want? Uh, oh. we, we want to pull it down as far oh. as possible. Oh yeah, that's it. This is just as hard as I can comfortably pull. That's that's good. We haven't even engaged the nuts. <laughs> you tell me when. Okay, keep adjusting. The noises in here are slightly concerning. No. <laughs> Um, maybe we don't go too tight. I think that's pretty. Yeah, that's probably good. Yeah. I go until she speaks to me, like timing. Yep. Frank Hill talks to you. Right about there, eh? Yeah, that's pretty good. One more for the ladies. Oh, that one made a lot of noise. Oh yeah. It's moving the whole car instead of just the body now. 
We're genius. So smart. Damn, they should hire us on for like build rocket ships. Yeah, we just gotta trim these to fit. They're cut to fit, but you gotta leave room for adjustment. It might move on the way home. I leave four inches. Mm -hmm. You wanna know how I eyeballed that perfectly? How so? I have a little tip for people. Uh, I, what I do is I look at it, okay, and then I envision my thumb next to it. Oh. And then what I do is turn off the part of my brain that cares. <laughs> and then I just cut it. Wait, what are, what are you Nothing doing? going on over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to shit. The Depression GTO. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the compression GTO. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gotta blend this in so the cops, you know, the better it looks, the less likely, you know. I got just the thing. You know what? Can't even tell it's there. Bush Dio. Well, the camo works pretty well. I bet that rides all the way. I bet that's there for years. We gotta put our wheels on here now. We will be attaching them with new lug nuts from lugnutguys.com, where Jeff actually hand delivered these lug nuts from Minnesota to here for me. Drove four hours. Because these freaking TA wheels take special lug nuts. They're, Whoa. I mean, they're the same as my Corvette, but. What in the hell are you? They're goofy as hell. I would literally not know where to buy those. Uh, no, and the only place, like, if you have any weird lug nuts or combinations or anything, you just go on lugnutguys.com or call them, and they'll just they'll walk you through it. I mean, they're really great guys. So I bought from them bef well before YouTube for years and years, and I just by happenstance started working with them. But absolutely the lowest prices on lug nuts. I mean, and they do hub-centric rings and wheels and all kinds of stuff, too. But... You know, lug nuts especially, that's like their... Uh, th these guys have like a fetish for it, okay? They're nuts. They're nuts for nuts. I'm excited for this. These might look incredible. I think they will. The color almost fits. Kind of rust. <laughs> kind of like crap. Oh yeah, they look awesome. Once again, I have accidentally created something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Just about need one more right there, don't we? Yeah, we're going to need one there. Oh, I got some other ones over there. And then right here, yes, it blends nice. These are good color. It's not easy, but this <laughs> see the green. It has to blend just right. Mm, yes. There you go. Mm, yes. Yes. Like well, shapely with it. The big reveal. Yes. Will it's it like halfway done? Will it break in half or? <laughs> It's pretty cool. Actually, it looks more like a car than it ever has since we've <laughs> met it. The license plates did good at hiding all that. It looks like it has a trunk. It's a complete lie. I like it. Now, what do you think? 22, 24,000 Barrett Jackson? What? You know, 28 if we get the guys mm -hmm. drunk enough. I don't know how much more we're going to get done today, but I wouldn't mind ripping out some of this. Maybe get rid of the, the particle board floors, perhaps. Really not even worried about the passenger side of the car so much, because I would never subject anybody else to be in this thing. Something for me to sit on, that would be pretty cool. I, you know, maybe we start with the headliner, though, and we'll work our way down. That might be a little easier, although that's some good fabric. Does anybody want this? Oh my god, look at that. Oh. The dome light cover's perfect. <laughs> I can't see what was going on. <laughs> oh, it's a, uh, also that. Oh my. Oh. 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 Evacuate if you value your lives. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> the new PBG shirt also <laughs> uses a ventilator. Filtration. I don't want to do this right now. Oh. It is half past beer 30. You're right. Let's come back tomorrow. <laughs> it's still here. <laughs> I feel better looking at it, walking in on it now. It's, you know what we've done? We haven't fixed it. We've fooled ourselves into thinking it's not actually still just as bad as it was, which is probably 
more dangerous. <laughs> Way more dangerous. However, much like less likely to get pulled over because it looks just like a regular shitty car. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm going to dig into the asbestos and uh, get some mesothelioma. And uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start on the inside here and, and get a, a cockpit set up. I hate everything about this. Oh, mm, yay. You know, it's funny. You can see where the car is split in the middle. So, oh my God. Yeah, that that is a brace. Here's the body bushing. There. Keep that, that's, oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh man. It's not even rusty. Yeah, it's still got the paint on it. Fantastic under there. I feel like that scene in Joe Dirt, when he ties himself to that bomb, yeah, I got the poo on me. That's that's what I feel like. The car's too damn dusty to be in here and vacuum it out. It's just clogging the air. What the hell is that thing? Peterson Baby Products. Why does it... the logo look like a trucking company? <laughs> I think it's for beating the Peterbilt. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? I don't know. Somebody will know. If you know, let me know, I guess. If this was yours, we're sorry. <laughs> Is that a coin purse? Yeah. Rich Corinthian leather. <laughs> Clean that up and put it in my 90As. Very nice. Oh, yes. It would match your coin purse, yes. With the car cleaned out, we now need to establish some sort of support for my seat because you remember how the drive shaft was rubbing on the transmission tunnel we have this piece of square stock the idea is basically I want to sit in the car and not move the transmission tunnel down and therefore rub a hole through the drive shaft eventually we got to put a little bend on the end here I think the distributor hole of an FE should be about right oh yeah is that a yeah it looks like 20 uh, 23 degrees yeah that's about perfect <laughs> A little bit more, but you can kind of see our idea here. We brace from the good part back here to the good part up there. And don't uh, touch any of this. And, well, because we'll be using this. Give him a little... <laughs> okay, let's see if that does... Oh, God damn, I'm good. All right, get the welder. Question my fabrication skills? Yeah, a little. Good. That's a safe thing to do. <laughs> You'd be worried if you didn't. I like where this is headed. Me too. Yeah. South. Away from here. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the muffler off your ass so you don't light on fire. We got a furnace now. <laughs> you literally do. Just put heat in. That will be a radiant heater. There we go. Cross your fingers. And you got the front one with a stud on it. We can locate it with that. Now we need to extend it in to fit quite the foresight during this. And we'll say we're pretty, we're pretty much geniuses. Well, the seat is all the way forward. I hope I can make that move. Well, we better bolt it in and then try. Yes. <laughs> well, while we we could like lubricate the tracks right now. No, nah, that's dumb. That's as big. Dumb. Now we're doing it. They look fine. I don't understand how those are good. This car rusted in such weird ways. There's still nuts, still nuts falling out of it. Uh oh. See how you are? The judge is here. What do you think, sir? It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Oh, I love the floor. What you, I love what you've done with the floor. <laughs> <laughs> we bolted the trunk to the frame. <laughs> so, it's like a demolition derby car. Yes. Your fridge stickers are I living a new that. life. They live on. I don't know what that used to say, but now it says it's hard to shit. <laughs> it's hard to shit. <laughs> it's a damn shame you're gonna have to drill a hole through that perfectly good floor to run this fuel line. I know. Uh, let me go ahead and do that right now. It's done. Okay. <laughs> so we could have thrown the whole fuel tank through that. Kevin's trying to figure out why. Uh, brake lights aren't working. The stoplight fuse is uh, made out of tin foil and the tin foil is actually burned up. That would be that one. I wired up a kill switch. Now I can turn the ignition on and off without fumbling around with that uh, you know ignition switch. I wouldn't I'd like to put the key switch back in the car at some point here but 
not right this second. If something goes wrong, I just flip the switch and the car dies. Once again, attempting to burn your car down unsuccessfully. Damn it. I know, I try. Oh, ho, ho, very nice. We have a break of lights. Oh, ho, ho. All of them? You have dos bulbos. Bro there, Rose. Well, I'm dealing with these. Dalton is wiring in a new headlight switch. Or at least had one in stock. That one was really flaky, so why the hell not? Holy shit. We got drivers. Now hit the brake. Let's really test it. Oh, yeah. Running lights all the way around. Yeah, let me just... Oh, yep. Oh, yep. No, hang on. Hey, hey, that's cool. Never move the car again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cleaning up in here. And this thing has full instrumentation. It has actual gauges, not idiot lights. Temp and oil gauges, actual gauges. That must be part of the tack package. Thank you for cleaning the poop. Yes. Mm, looks very nice, actually. Let's check the transmission fluid and take this thing around the block. Well, that wiper boat is very hot. Yep. Found it. You got wire? You might be a little tired. Ah, I can't imagine that. No. What the hell is thing for a I think they're just missing cylinders. Real bad. Okay. Let's take it around the block because I just want to see what it drives like. Me too. We can use the motivation. <laughs> it looks so much better in the movies. Oh, there's a thing that went out my butt. Okay, you're fine. Wait, does this side hold people? No, not as well as this one. How about we see if it's got second and third? Good call. Way home, be fine. Uh, yeah, I would not go for the interstate. <laughs> I've ridden a lot of sketchy shit, but I haven't ridden something where there was so much dust in the air, so much of it touched the ground at once. Yeah, it runs and so it was, poorly. It ran so bad, but we were going so fast. <laughs> hmm. It was like it was, we were doing like twelve. I was not about it. Got a wire that's burned through right here, number hmm. seven. That's not what you want. I've never even pulled a spark plug out of it. I've never even looked at it. I've never really <laughs> done anything with it. I just said, oh, it runs. It'll drive home. It'll run under the steering shaft with that one. Still missing one. Yeah. There's still a dead one. Oh, the tack works. The tack works? Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, we have a temp gauge that says it's running really hot. Huh. Number one is still quite cold, and I'm only reading 180 on the exhaust piece itself, whereas the one next to it's maxing out the camera. Mm -hmm. So, these ones on this side look quite happy, though. Got a good even burn here. Hmm. 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 Why are your nipples so hot? Uh, it's fouled, actually, if you can believe oh. it. Yeah, just a little, though. That's your dead cylinder. Huh? Absolutely, it is. The thermal camera never lies. R46S. That is a oddly hot plug. They've been trying to fight a oh. fouling plug. It's had issues for a while, then. Yeah. They're trying to burn off that extra oil with a hot plug? Yep. At least they come out easy enough. <laughs> well, look how well oiled they are. <laughs> <laughs> Inside and out. I think it might need eight plugs. 45, 46. And survey says 46. Okay. It's one plugs. step hotter than normal, you think, Kish? We'll go 45s. AKA, we'll see what's on the shelf. Yeah, whatever you got. You had seven spark plugs laying about. I did indeed. We will once again have seven strong <laughs> cylinders. <laughs> We're doing nothing. Uh, you found the other half of the oil pressure sender. Yeah, and then about three times more wire than I needed in the middle as well. But well, good. You get it all free of charge. Wow, thanks. The extra resistance is worth it. That's eight cylinders. That's what we want. So it shakes a little at idle, but it doesn't when it revs. Yeah. There. Much better. Now it's just regular tuning issues. Now it's just a piece of shit. Yeah, regular tuning issues are well. Hey, you got oil pressure? <laughs> well, the gauge. The gauge works, but oh. it ain't great. The, the gauge works. Is it the one that says zero? Uh, yeah. Huh. Uh-oh. It's just that extra wire. Yeah, that's it's the extra. It's, see, the thing that concerns me is it's not on zero. It's just above zero. What do you think? What is going on? Let's check the plug wires. Real quick. There. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Yeah. It ran really smooth for that being wrong. In fact, I know so. Now think of the power now it's going to have. Be, now it's fixed. This would be incredible. It'll probably be oil pressure even. There we go. That's better. Now it actually runs really good. I made it this time. Wait, no, Dalton, that's the police station. Pretty spunky. Got good power. Well, we got all them new plugs. Ah. All, all seven, eight, maybe six and a half cylinders. Hell yeah. All right, do that again. That's that's rich. Oil. A little rich. Yeah, that's not blue. No, I they're not. Just Makes sense. It's burning externally. How's your oil pressure now? Uh, <laughs> well, you know. Look, if I can make it back from Cali, you can do this just fine. That wasn't very pleasant for you, though. No, it was terrible, but no. it was cold. So this should be way better. <laughs> we need gas. It. This is way safer. I can get out anytime I want. I just be gone. <laughs> this is the best spot ever. I won't go any faster. That would be the worst spot ever. Here. Let me get some cool Burt Reynolds style footage of you driving. <laughs> Beer in hand. Amazing. I was trying to open my fuel filler door here. It seems to be malfunctioning. Let's get this thing out of here, man. She's done. All right. Go fuck Tom about it. Yes. Yeah. He'd like to see it. How's the view up there? It's good. Yeah. 
Here goes nothing. To Tom's house. Uh, zero. That's what I like to see. This is absolutely terrifying. We're not even going anywhere, but I can hear because the frame is attached to the body, every single bump we hit goes straight into the roof. <laughs> it's so bad. I have to drive this 250 miles home. We'll be really lucky to make it. I know that much. This thing claims that it's overheating. I don't believe it though. I think we lost all the gauges. Oh, it's because the headlights are on. Yep. Ha! I've seen that one before. You pull the headlight switch and the gauges go to shit. Now we have oil pressure again and the temp's normal. We got no speedometer. But we got a tank to go off of. We got all three gears. Man, lots of crap blowing around in here. I can say I've done smarter things than this. Goggles. Doesn't drive too bad. Got some ass to it. Uh, now the temperature's getting hot. Maybe. I don't think the hood's shut. Okay, now we get sketchy. Highway speed. I don't know how fast. Maybe 55, 60. It's definitely not good. like a boss smooth like butter no <laughs> it's fucking terrifying <laughs> it is so scary driving wise it's kind of okay i mean it's all over the road yeah the hood flew open don't you know anybody that could do an alignment real quick no oh, i aligned it with a pry bar oh that's pretty good is it puking boiling no okay so it maxed out the temp gauge but i don't oh. You know, those finicky old gauges. Nah, who knows? <laughs> Factory gauges do suck. We do well, you drove it from there to here. That's seven miles further than it's driven in the last 20 years. <laughs> oh, God, he's right. <laughs> seven miles further than it's driven in about 40. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't sound yeah, like it was running bad. I can hold my hand on it that far. That that feels like 170. You're that's fine. the coolest Pontiac ever ran. Two oh, walnuts. You want some more nuts? <laughs> more. <laughs> it just, every time. Four nuts every time. <laughs> it, it produces them. one last night before it endures a day of absolute torture tomorrow. Feels like home. Hopefully it gets a good night rest. I can hear it rusting. <laughs> here we are this morning. It's still here. We keep leaving it places and <laughs> keeps coming back. I don't know people will steal it. I don't know why. March down here. You know, it's kind of like marching on death row in junkyard digs. La Man. Here's this Buick powered. It is. I realized something, or Mook realized something. What? I put a Buick in a Pontiac, you recently put a Pontiac in a Buick. I did. Huh. <laughs> That's I true. Notice. I didn't realize that either. I guess we'll get this piece of crap fired up, get it out of Tom's woods, go meet up with Jess. She's going to chase car home. I know, kind of bitching out on that, but uh, I mean, <laughs> give me a break, guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> it wasn't so much the fact that you don't trust this, it's that you didn't want to put your beloved other half in this dangerous predicament for and no the reason. Dog. And the dog. I'm that confident that it will start right up. Well, of course it will. Pontiac. <laughs> GM two barrel. Mighty two jet. I hear the front pump whining a little bit. Ah, shh. You got half a jug of trans fluid. You're fine. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, by the way, I had to use half of some of your trans fluid. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Well, here we go. Yay. Thanks for uh, letting me destroy your shop. Yep. Don't die. I will do my very, very best. We'll see you yep. next time. Take care. Drive safe if you can. Well, drive. Self drive. Drive. Just drive. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Dalton. Good luck on living. Yep, he's dead. Nothing's vomiting out of it, so therefore it must be fine. I would open the hood, but I mean it's kind of a long process. I got shut like that again. No, because Walnut's doing his job here. Yeah. Emotional support man. <laughs> well, at least if I spill it, it just falls out the ground. Wonder what people think when they see this. How's that going in there? Very normal. <laughs> <laughs> Completely <laughs> normal. Oh, nothing to see here. Okay. I would estimate that between driving around the shop, driving to Tom's, driving to Kevin's from Tom's this morning, and then driving here, we've probably driven maybe 40 to 50 miles, uh, and then 10 miles to the gallon with the way I've been driving the thing. It's probably about right. It's probably 12 or 13 as an average, and uh, you know the weight is on our side here. Let's see if it starts again. It's pocket. noises in this thing. It's impressive actually. At least taking the back roads you get a really scenic view, you know. I mean, who knew that Iowa had hills? Really though, very pretty. A little slower pace, kind of the way people used to travel when this car was built. Everything moved a little bit slower, except for the GTO. It's kind of hard to breathe in here.
right. What's up, car? Puke him? No, you're not. What's that about? Uh, I guess I better open the damn hood. I smelled it. I don't see it. It's not hot. I can hold my hand on it. Is it just this thing, maybe? Is it building pressure at all? Yes, it is. Okay, well, it's working. I got a pretty good smell. You smell anything back there? Uh, yeah, I smelled it when I got out of the car. I don't see anything, though. It's weird. I did notice that the actual overflow out of this jug is plugged, I don't know, with a mud dauber vest. Let me just get that out of there. There we go. I guess the only thing to do is just completely ignore it and continue on. Can't be that bad. I gotta pee. It's doing okay. I don't know. Stinky. Uh, I can deal with stinky. Uh, are we vomiting? Nah. It's pretty good. Let's see. We've gone 75 miles. That car's been off the road for, I don't know, 40. He said 82, 83. So yeah. it's been off the road for over 40 years. And it looks like that. <laughs> fish. Hello, the fish. I'm gonna guess probably four gallons or so, but it's kind of hard to tell with a boat tank. <laughs> yeah, three, okay. Well, that's about 15 miles to the gallon. That's about typical for one of these, really. Back on the road. That door's fixing itself, that's nice. A little inconvenient having to start the car with a pair of pliers, but it's doable. Behold, Missouri. This car's traveled Minnesota on a, to Iowa on a trailer, but now it's driving into Missouri, its new home. Probably forever, actually. Kind of, kind of fallen in love with it. <laughs> but uh, wow, what a ride! shit out of that tire oh man oh, there's 150 bucks down the drain shit yeah, this one's better nothing puking I'm pretty good yet 
Rick and Pontiac. Man, can't beat them. You can't see it. But there is an eclipse. What do you think, Fish? You think that's a good eclipse? That's a leaf. I was trying the leaf trick. Sometimes when you hold a leaf up, you can tell by the shadow how much of the sun is covered. I don't think it's covered enough here. I'll eat some turkey fish. Yeah. There we go. Don't tell mom though. He's a good boy. Yep. Oh. Oh, no way. I think said half a tank. Probably take at least four or five gallons. My trim ring fell off of the steering wheel after it got done eviscerating my hands. Oh. Uh, it's, it's very sharp, actually, but it's in wonderful condition. Uh, we'll just put that back eventually, you know, but uh, yeah. We'll do it again. No problem. GTO is a different kind of automobile. It's not just a, uh, you know, it's like a Corvette. Something different. I mean, even though this one's not very nice, you might say, but it doesn't matter. It's still a Pontiac GTO. It is the original bona fide muscle machine. It was built to do one thing that's kick ass and look good doing it. Something up with the brakes in this thing. Get the right front lock. adjusted them. In fact, I don't think I've gone backwards at all since I've driven it. So you have to go backwards and hit the brakes hard for the self-adjusters to work, and I haven't done that. That's probably what the issue is. Pedal feels great. I mean, they stop, no problem. It's just they're grabby and weird feeling. It's like they're out of adjustment. So I will, of course, do nothing and continue on. Onward! I don't know if you can really pick this up, but you can see the lighting difference. Strange looking. Surreal. Like I'm driving in a Mad Max wasteland. In my Mad Max GTO. <laughs> the Road Warrior GTO. All right, car, what's going on? You like burned a plug maybe? I don't know, it probably fouled that one. Okay, so she's a heavy burner on the oil. Yikes. <laughs> Put a cord in and see where that gets us. 
It's probably at least two quarts low. That's okay though. We're almost home, car. You are doing a hell of a good job. Two quarts in 220-ish miles. That's pretty bad. Oh. How about three quarts? It's above the ad mark. It'll make it all. success uh, and with that that's the uh, end of the saga for now on the rustiest GTO on earth what do we do with it I don't know I think restoring it's pretty much out of the question I've done some pretty serious restorations on the channel but I think this one's beyond that but that doesn't mean it has to be parted out or scrapped we could use it still it just needs some uh, clean up the edges a bit you know, make it a little safer, make it drive better, and just leave it just like this, maybe? Mad Max style? I kind of like that. Looks like the bumper's falling off. I'm tired. Check out PoleBarnMerch.com. And, uh, you know, if you want to see more of this stuff here, that's what supports the channel. You can join the Low Buck Club for 99 cents a month to see all the videos early, members-only live streams, that helps support the channel, and, uh, well, I guess we'll see you guys next time on Pole Barn Garage. What's next? Maybe that Nova. I don't know. See ya.